After 212 days of repairs, upgrades, and iteration, SpaceX just attempted the second integrated test flight of the Starship launch vehicle, and the improvements were obvious. The last flight was on April 20 earlier this year and ended with a bang after a few issues with the launch pad, engines, internal fires, etc. This time around, we saw a very different result from engine ignition all the way to an eventual explosion. With this test complete, SpaceX now has a lot of work ahead of them as they find out exactly what went wrong and launch the next Starship prototype. Here I'll go more in depth into what happened on the second flight test, where the issues arose, what to expect in the near future, keep watching and find out in today's episode. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. St With just one minute left until launch and the sunrise in the background, all the Raptor engines were chilled, the rock was filled with around 10 million pounds of propellant, and it prepared to start up its engines. As the clock hit T40 seconds, there was a plan to hold for a few minutes as teams checked each system, along with ensuring no civilian boats were within the restricted launch. Area Despite SpaceX having around 15 minutes of time to hold, it only took around 2 minutes before the clock resumed counting down. As the clock hit close to T5 seconds, the water-cooled steel plate began shooting out water in preparation for a liftoff. Then right at T0, all 33 Raptor engines ignited and began blasting the pad. Only around 4 seconds later and Starship was in the air. By T plus 10 seconds, it had cleared the pad entirely. This was much faster than the first integrated test flight, which was by design. Soon after, the vehicle began accelerating, with all 33 Raptor engines working properly, as indicated by the flight data provided at the bottom. At T plus 42 seconds, SpaceX switched camera angles, which gave a great view of the bottom of the booster. Here you could see that all 33 Raptor engines were still working without a single engine missing. It's important to point out that on the last Starship integrated test flight, by around 40 seconds in, there were already multiple engines missing. By T plus 1 minute and 12 seconds, they called out that Starship had reached max Q, which is the moment of peak mechanical stress on the rocket. At that point, Starship was traveling around 1,500 km an hour and close to 15 km high. These numbers continued to increase over the next minute or so before the biggest milestone and main goal of this mission, stage separation. At T plus 2 minutes and 40 seconds, we first saw the flight data indicate that all but three of Super Heavy's engines had been shut down. Just seconds later, Mission Control called out that booster engine cutoff had occurred. You could see the bottom of Super Heavy go from a bright light to a dim point. In a T plus 2 minutes and 48 seconds, the upper stage engine ignited, creating massive ripples in the atmosphere. Just a second later, and the upper stage successfully disconnected from the booster. Right away, Super Heavy began its flip in preparation for a return to the ground. As the camera panned to the booster, it completed its flip in just a few seconds and began heading down range. However, this also marked the first visible error in the entire launch. At T plus 3 minutes and 15 seconds and the seconds following, you could see what looked like some of the engines attempted a light for the boost back burn. A small explosion could be seen followed by leaking fluids. Finally, at T plus 3 minutes and 20 seconds, the entire booster experienced a rapid unscheduled disassembly. This explosion shot debris and created a massive white cloud before the camera panned back to the Starship upper stage, which that entire time had been gaining altitude. For minutes in and you could just barely see the Starship upper stage. At that point, the vehicle was traveling over 7,500 km an hour at an altitude of 117 km. The flight data also highlighted that all six Raptor engines were working properly. Over the next three minutes, the upper stage continued to accelerate and get closer to its suborbital destination. This was up until around eight minutes into the launch when you could barely see the vehicle. Looking very closely, at T plus eight minutes and eight seconds, you can see large ripples and disruptions in the atmosphere indicating that there could have been an explosion. Also focusing on the flight data, at the exact same time, you see that all six engines stopped running and the vehicle's speed also stopped increasing. On the flight profile, the Starship engine cutoff was scheduled to happen at T plus 8 minutes and 33 seconds into the flight. The stream then cut to a screen that said, awaiting acquisition of signal. Around that time, the SpaceX commenters were also under the impression that the vehicle was still intact and beginning its journey around the Earth. That was until they said in a quote, 
we've lost the data from the second stage. We heard in a call out that we were in terminal guidance, but we haven't gotten any more data since then, so we think we may have lost the second stage. It was then revealed that the second stage explosion was caused by the activation of the flight termination system. As far as why this happened, it's not exactly clear. It could have been that the upper stage was off track, an issue with the engines, or a mistake. Either way, this marked the end of Starship's second integrated test flight and the success for the company, who primarily wanted a complete stage separation. In the coming days, we can expect to hear a lot more from the company as they determine exactly what happened. Prior to the first launch of Starship earlier this year, the second test flight showed quite a bit of improvement in a few different areas. If the second launch had gone perfect, the booster would have completed a boost back burn before simulating what a landing would look like over the Gulf of Mexico. The upper stage would have coasted around the globe for close to an hour and a half until a reader in the atmosphere and crash landed off the coast of Hawaii in the Pacific Ocean. In reality, an explosive ending is not the ideal option, but it's a realistic aspect of SpaceX's methodology. They're building Starship at a rapid pace and nothing provides more information than a real test. The second flight debuted the hot stage separation system in a new electric thrust vector control or TVC system for super heavy Raptor engines, in addition to reinforcements to the pad foundation and a water-cooled steel flame deflector, among many other enhancements. Starting with the pad, on the first Starship flight test, a concrete pad was used which was destroyed by the thrust of 33 Raptor engines. The shot concrete and debris in every direction, damaging structures at stage zero and flying hundreds of meters. To try and fix this problem between the first launch and today, SpaceX installed and tested a massive water-cooled steel plate. Looking back at the beginning of today's flight, the water began flowing seconds before engine ignition. Most importantly, no debris can be seen flying in the air as Starship clears the tower, unlike the first flight. This is a good sign that the pad looks to have not only protected the vehicle and surrounding structures, but stayed intact as well. The goal for SpaceX is to launch, gather data and launch again. The state of the pad and various infrastructure at stage zero plays a big role in how fast the company can prepare and launch again. Another change that looks to have done a great job was a new electric thrust vector control system for the super heavy Raptor engines. During the first flight, there were a few issues that stuck out as the main reasons for failure. The Raptor engines, for example, experienced multiple problems throughout the test. Multiple engines were disabled during the launch sequence and even more failed during the flight. Eventually, the spacecraft also lost thrust vectoring control of the Raptor engines, which led to the rocket starting and out-of-control tumbling motion. This time around, all the way until stage separation, all 33 Raptor engines looked to have been firing as planned without any issues. There was no partial loss of power or small explosions which were seen on the first flight. Interestingly, even without the application of any new information gained from this test flight, the next Starship prototype is already much more advanced and upgraded than the rocket we just saw left off. With each new prototype, SpaceX is improving the design and build of the vehicle. As far as the future of Starship, it looks very promising. What a stunning spectacle of the SpaceX Starship and Super Heavy IFT-2 soaring into the sky. All 33 engines blazed in harmony and hey, no debris storms this time. The hot staging was a masterful fusion of art and science, creating a breathtaking melody. Sure, Ship 25 didn't make it back from space, but that's part of the process. Test, fail, improve, repeat until perfection. This is the way. Kudos to the SpaceX team. Alright, let's get more in-depth about this historic flight. As the clock paused at 40 seconds, SpaceX managers checked an issue in Starship's upper stage before giving it the final go. At 8 a.m. Eastern Time, the Super Heavy's 33 Raptor engines roared to life, blasting a fiery plume and shaking the ground at SpaceX's Boca Chica launch site on the Texas coast. The 33 engines seemed to perform flawlessly, pushing the rocket through Max-Q the most stressful part of the ascent. Then, the Super Heavy booster separated from the Starship upper stage, marking a major milestone that was missed in April. So far, today has been incredibly successful, even with the rut of the Super Heavy booster. Kate Tice, SpaceX's quality engineer on the company's webcast. At about two and a half minutes after roaring to life and bolting off the launch pad, the Super Heavy booster expended most of its fuel, prompting the Starship spacecraft to fire its own engines and break away. SpaceX aims to send the spacecraft to near-orbital velocities. 
orbital velocities typically around 17,500 miles per hour, which roughly translates to about 28,000 kilometers per hour. After surviving the heated stage separation, the Starship spacecraft was using its own six engines to continue propelling itself to faster speeds. But before Starship could reach orbit, SpaceX Mission Control lost contact with it and stopped receiving data. At about 12 minutes into the flight, SpaceX triggered the automated flight termination system, meaning they had to abort and make the second stage undergo RUD as well. So we think we may have lost the second stage. John and Sparucker just said on the broadcast, he says, they believe that an automated detonation had occurred. This wrapped your engines on Starship and it headed away. Everything really looked good. What we do believe right now is that the automated flight termination system on second stage appears to have triggered very late in the burn as we were headed downrange out. Over the Gulf of Mexico. Set John and Sparucker, SpaceX's principal integration engineer, during the live broadcast today. If Starship had successfully flown, it would have reached an altitude of about 146 miles. They plan splashdown at around 830 central off the coast of Kauai, Hawaii. According to a statement on the company's website, SpaceX later determined that in the first few minutes of the April flight, propellant leaked from the Super Heavy booster and caused fires that severed the connection with the primary flight computer. That's why the upper stage and booster failed to separate. SpaceX concluded, engineers lost control of the vehicle and had to abort, blowing the rocket up with the flight termination system. In any case, this is still a huge success for SpaceX. Congratulations to the entire SpaceX team on an exciting second integrated flight test of Starship. Starship successfully lifted off under the power of all 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy booster and made it through stage separation. CEO Elon Musk also congratulated his team on X. Additionally, Bill Nelson said, congrats to the teams who made progress on today's flight test. Spaceflight is a bold adventure demanding a can-do spirit and daring innovation. Today's test is an opportunity to learn, then fly again. Together, NASA and SpaceX will return humanity to the moon, Mars, and beyond. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. By the way, are you familiar Talk Talk Philippines app? Talk Talk is a delivery service app designed to connect more people by delivering items door to door. For more information, download the Talk Talk app here down below.